Hello and welcome back fellow colorists. Jody here. Today's video is going to be the first video in what I hope are quite a few videos throughout the year and using the hashtag use what you have. So basically you shop your own stash of products that you have purchased and maybe aren't getting enough use or enough love. So I am all about using what I have. So when I saw a YouTube channel called Art Journey um, showing what she was going to be doing and uh, she called her auntie haul. Um, I thought that I could get behind that kind of idea because it coincides with uh, how I feel that we should be using up our stuff. So today I'm going to be swatching out two sets of the Viva watercolor sheets. I have this set here. It's the original set. It comes in 16 colors. They're transparent watercolors that are dried down pigment onto paper. Uh, I keep this in my travel art kit. I've had it since 2021 and I have used it quite a bit, but I never, never actually swatched it into my swatch book. So this is a piece of watercolor paper that I have disc punched and added to my disc binded swatch book. The second set is uh, uh, the, the Viva Watercolor Pans 2.0 and it is on cork. So they are different colors. Um, they are still dried down, but instead of paper, they've uh, Put them onto cork. You mix the colors on this uh, side here. It's very portable and I hate to say like I bought this Christmas 2022 for myself along with a sketchbook but I have not even swatched them yet. So definitely I need to use my stash and I'm going to swatch these both out. Then I'm going to use them in a coloring book. I am going to apply Daniel Smith watercolor ground to a page in the Sea of Colors, a coloring book by Angela Gonzalez. The paper in this book is quite thin. Uh, this is a sneak peek of a February page that I also applied the watercolor ground on before using watercolor medium. So the paper is very thin. It's not meant for watercolor paper. It's meant just for uh, markers or pencil. So if I want to use a watercolor medium in this book, I should uh, add the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. Um, you could also add gesso or satin liquid glazing. It's just I have this and I like to use it. So you will see me apply that and we will let it dry and then we will use the watercolors on top of that. In this section of the video you will see me adding the Daniel Smith transparent watercolor ground to a page. This page here I have put another piece of paper behind it. Using a soft tip foam uh, brush uh, with this just been slightly damp just so it's not hard. I'm going to pick up some of the liquid and I just use the stuff off the cap because I usually shake it up beforehand. <coughs> you don't need a lot and I'm just going to apply it directly to the page making sure that you're doing even coats. And I alternate between going back and forth and then up and down. Once it's dry, I will feel the paper. And if, if there's any um, large felt bumps and stuff, I can lightly sand it with a nail buffer brush, nail file, before uh, watercoloring on the page. Will take 24 hours to dry. While the paper might feel dry to the touch before that, uh, I find best results is waiting a full 24 hours. Okay, we'll set that aside and let it dry and get back to our swatching. So we'll go ahead and start swatching. I will zoom you in a little bit. I have a piece of blotting cloth beside it. I have a uh, just a round number six paintbrush. I've got some water here and I'm not even going to pre-spritz these. I'm just going to, uh, because they don't take much to activate, so I'm just going to uh, use a wet brush. We'll start with the original ones and I'll just zoom you in a little bit. And we'll just do them in order. So here we go. We'll I'll do the first one or two with you and then I'll cue up the music. So this is crimson and doesn't take a lot. 
and you can see how vibrant that is. It goes really quickly. So that's all I'll be doing is touching it down a little bit. These sheets take forever. Like I said, I've had this uh, for a couple of years and uh, haven't used it much. Okay, I'll go ahead with some music. So that is the first set. Zoom you back out so you can see all of them at once. So as you can see, it doesn't take very much water. And when I am traveling, I generally just have a water brush that I'm using the paints with. Very colorful. Some of the colors are kind of close. Um, so really they do need to be watered down because uh, using them at full strength. Our second set is the uh, Again, 16 colors. This one, however, is on a cork, like I mentioned. So it also came with a, a watercolor papered swatch chart. So as I'm doing this, I'll also quickly swatch that out as well. Again, I'm not going to pre-moisten them because it doesn't take much to activate them. So I'm just gonna, a little bit on the pan. And I'm gonna, so this is Scarlet. The next one is the one right beside it, so that's how I've done it. And it's amaranth. So that's pretty. Okay, I'll just keep going down the list. Okay, this is the second swatch of the second palette. And we'll just hold the, this up a little bit. So you can see the different, a few similar colors, but it does add to the range quite a bit. Uh, the white is a little bit uh, pink here, only because of my brush wasn't totally clean. But very bright um, colors. They are, I believe, a dye-based watercolor. Um, they just say that they're transparent 
and made in India. So uh, definitely the packaging is great for both. Uh, throw them in your bag and easily to travel with. So if you're looking for an easy travel palette, the, it's definitely good. Um, mixing wise, uh, while you can mix here, it's kind of a plasticized paper. Um, probably not. Uh, there's not a lot of room for doing a whole lot of mixing. So from the palette to the paper uh, works fairly well for me with just a little bit of mixing space. But those are the two sets of the Via watercolor sheets that I have swatched out that I own. And now let's go and put them to use in a coloring page. For the remainder of the video, this will just be a voiceover. Um, so you can listen to some music and I'll pop back in once in a while to explain maybe what I'm doing. I'm not a professional watercolor person, so I don't feel that I can actually provide uh, insightful guidance to any of my subscribers. Um, what I just did on screen though was take a nail buff and lightly sand down any ridges left from the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. I'm just going to uh, use a variety of small watercolor paintbrushes and using a uh, plate as a palette I'm going to uh, paint water using the watercolor sheets from Viviva and uh, mainly the palette, uh, the cork palette for this. I do have fun using watercolors. Uh, like I said, I'm not a professional though, so uh, just enjoy this. I'll pop back in with some stories and uh, commentary shortly. Enjoy. The color I'm using is the amaranth, and uh, I have some of it watered down on the plate palette, um, but when I want to use it full strength, I just dipped right into the uh, cork palette itself. Um, I just wanted the um, flags to have a couple of different shades of that color, so that's uh, why I did that. Here I am trying to see if I can use a wet on wet technique on this paper. So I'm pre-wetting the paper that has been treated and then I'm trying to drop in the paint and see if it flows. Um, it didn't flow very much. Um, this isn't watercolor paper so um, that's fine. I just uh, went to back to kind of normal painting. But that was my initial thought was I wanted to try to see if wet on wet technique would work. Watching myself paint this ship is really putting me in the mood for a vacation uh, or a cruise vacation. I'm not sure if uh, you feel the same way, but I have a foot and a half of snow outside right now. And uh, a cruise sounds about right right now. So this uh, little beach scene is uh, uh, reminding me that it's maybe time for a vacation. I would love to know if there's such a thing as a craft or a coloring vacation. It would be great to uh, meet up with a bunch of other like-minded uh, colorists and uh, color and learn things for a week. That would be awesome. What do you think?
I'm enjoying the whimsical nature of the uh, Sea of Colors book by Angela Gonzalez. Um, they're just such a fun, delightful little sketched picture and uh, I know she has a couple of other books. I know she has, I believe it's Happy Cats and uh, another one, but uh, this is the only one I have of hers so far, but uh, comment down below. Do you own any of the Angela Gonzalez books? And uh, I wish she had them available in um, uh, better quality paper um, because I certainly would buy another copy with uh, like watercolor paper or uh, thicker paper in it. I don't think that I um, show you at the end of this video, but there was minimal buckling of this paper. Um, I did not have any bleed through at all. I do have it taped down to a plastic cutting board with uh, masking tape on the bottom just to hold it down while I'm painting. Uh, but I have had no issues with it. And I have colored in this without treating the paper and it does work much better with the treated paper. So if you are using her books and wanting to use any kind of wet medium, I would definitely suggest using either a gesso or a Daniel Smith watercolor ground type so solution. Just for reference, I have switched to a tiny watercolor brush um, in this for all these smaller details. So um, I had started out with the number six round. This is a tiny, uh, it's less than a one round. Um, it's more of a small detailing brush. And then later I use a uh, angled brush. So just so you know, I'm getting into these small little areas with a tiny brush. The color palette that I chose for this uh, picture was just straight off of the cork palette. So I just uh, looked at the what was on the page and looked at the palette and uh, just kind of went for it. So it was kind of nice to uh, have a limited, you know, there were 16 colors on the palette. So I made sure that I could just use what was on there and uh, it worked. So the blue birds are all blue and that's okay by me. I think that they're... Uh, kind of cute with their big, big eyes. I did take a gray Zig Clean Color brush pen at the end and just did a bit of uh, gray shadowing behind each eye of the birds. Um, so that's not in this, uh, in this video. So I just uh, thought I'd mention that when you see the final picture that you will see a bit of shadowing in the eyes. And I also, at the very end, take a little bit of stickles, uh, blue stickles, and uh, put it in some of the water uh, swirls. So, can't stop myself from having a bit of bling even on this page.
So here's some questions for you to leave uh, answers in the comments below. And they're all about getting stranded on a desert island. So imagine you are sitting there with that little lone crab on that island and you can bring only three coloring related items. So um, you would need to bring obviously a book. So which book would you bring or which um, illustrator would you bring? And two, what kind of medium would you bring? And three, I'll give you one other coloring supply. So um, it's, it's up to you. It could be another book, it could be a medium, but you have to specify at least one book or artist, a medium, and something else. And then also, what would be your favorite coloring snack? So you'll have to answer. You should have four items there. So uh, three coloring related and one favorite snack. And I think it would be fun to see what everybody uh, says they would take with them on a desert island. Thanks for playing along. I look forward to reading your comments. I'm using the angled brush here. It's a flat brush with an angle on it. Um, and I'm sure there's a more technical term than that. Um, and I'm also going in one direction. So um, we are doing this sails, so it's material. So I was trying to do them all uh, in one direction. And also I'm making the second one a little bit darker because I figured there'd be a little bit of difference uh, between them and then you see me blotting off with the cloth and using a wet paint brush to pick up any spots where I go over um, like in an area that shouldn't have paint so that's what I'm doing so as you see I just made an error and went over the line there I will come back with a, a cleaner brush and uh, pick it up and just uh, blot it off and you can do that because I've put the Daniel Smith watercolor ground down on the paper and so uh, you are able to fix things so that's a real plus of using a watercolor ground or a gesso on your page I'm using the flat angled brush again on all of these waves and if you notice I am trying to go in the same flow um, pattern as the waves so that any brush strokes would blend into the lines and uh, wouldn't be as noticeable. So getting close to being done here I'm now picking up a very damp uh, or lightly damp sea sponge and I'm just going to put a little bit more blue along the bottom to finish off that area of the page and then I'm going to add a few clouds and we're almost done. Thank you so much for watching and uh, letting me be your commentary host today. I'll see you again until later. Have a creative and colorful week. Bye-bye.